On the 17th of May 2006, just 153 days after YouTube was launched for the very first time, a bizarre channel by the name of Smosh will become the platform's most subscribed. Guys, I guess, I'm just gonna say, chat, I think Smosh by one of my, uh, by, by far one of my biggest inspirations to start just um, being more into uh, making content overall. If when, I, when I was a kid, uh, I told you this before, at home we that had cameras and we used to make a lot of content that dog shit and make and put it on the computer and edit it on Movie Maker. And whenever I start, I start seeing Smosh, and then I with my friends we would go to school and we'd film some shit and we do like like oh dude um, a time traveling as a warrior or whatever and we'd go in, we'd go in, in fucking in the living room and we'd go like. Uh, Cut and then it would teleport the guy across and you know we do like you know, Page you know. with a whopping two thousand nine hundred and eighty six yeah, subscribers, that. more than double second place who had just one thousand four hundred and sixty nine. This would foreshadow what would become an incredibly successful career for two Californian friends who had created this strange comedy channel. They would eventually release a full uh, length feature film, regain and hold the title. In my lore video, though, I have a couple extract of something that I, that I, that I filmed. Uh, it's in my lore video on YouTube. I'm pretty sure it's pretty sure it's out there somewhere. Of YouTube's most subscribed tracks, but... channel for two hundred and fifteen days in. 2013, and by 2014, Smosh was safely and consistently gaining approximately 100 million views per month, That's... which would last for a period of over five years. However, we say five years specifically because in early to mid-2019, something started to go wrong on each and every Smosh channel. Their unshakable viewership fortress began to crumble. Their reliable 100 million monthly views became 75 million, then 50 million, then recently just 15 million. On Smosh Pit, Smosh Games, and even their Spanish dub Smosh channel, it's the same story. 41 million has become 13 million, 18 million has become 7 million, 11 million has become less than 2 million, the decline of each all beginning at the exact same point in time. I want to say one last thing, I want to say one last thing, okay? one last small, 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 small mini rant, okay? Because I think sometimes some people can just admit, admit to everybody, need to admit to themselves that people have a lifespan. People will make content is pure up to a certain amount of time, right? And that's it. It's a cycle. They don't do pure content. They're not all. They're not all into it anymore. That's just the cycle of how the cycle of life. It is how it is, man. That's how it is. And a story. It's not because they're bad or they're dog. They're selling out. They're, they're dog shit. Just because they just. It's just gonna. That's just it. When Smosh uploaded their first video over 16 years ago, they could have never predicted their insane level of success. However, if Smosh is unable to turn their current viewership decline around, it will make for somewhat of a depressing end to a channel that's been YouTube's most subscribed on three separate occasions. All your content is dodgy, it's why it's, it's never gonna... The first time we already mentioned, it was mid-2006, and the title was claimed literally less than 3,000 subscribers. Why are you cooking me? What if you doesn't other people why are you cooking me? Why it came me? about after two high school friends by the name of Ian and Anthony began uploading bizarre lip-syncing videos to the platform, the first of which being uploaded on the 19th of November 2005, 26 days before the website was even officially launched and was rather still in beta testing mode. In their very first video, the watermark in the bottom left-hand corner showed that the goal of the videos was to promote their website, Smosh.com which had been running since 2002. It started as a website that I'd made for me and my friends to hang out and talk to each other after school. Smosh became a YouTube channel where Ian and I made videos together just because we liked to make each other laugh. Although the goal was to simply make each other laugh, they quickly realized that these videos also made their audience laugh. And with comedy in mind, the videos would shift to well thought out sketches, creating satire out of relatable life situations, such as how not to make a first impression. How After losing the position of YouTube's most subscribed channel in 2006, through these new sketch comedy videos, they would regain the title in April of 2007, this time boasting a much more impressive count of over 100,000 subscribers, at which point they would also hire their first staff member Excuse with the goal of growing the channel further, an impressive feat oh, for a YouTube sorry, channel, wrong channel. I'm so fucking dumb. in 2008. The videos continued that's, uh, to improve. That's Ryan. However, their subscriber count would be overtaken by Niga Higa, then Fred, who would become the first ever YouTuber to reach 1 million subscribers. Although overtaken by Fred, Smosh was still growing, eventually coming in closely behind as the third channel ever to reach 1 million subs. Hey guys, we just want to make a short little video to thank everyone who subscribed to us. 
One million subscribers is a huge milestone. Smosh were without a doubt on the cutting uh. edge of YouTube in the early 2010s. Their thumbnails, titles, ability to retain an audience through plots where you wouldn't get the joke unless you watched the entire video. At the time, there were simply very few other creators who had the same level of knowledge and skill. Subsequently, after losing the title of YouTube's most subscribed channel to Fred, they'd begin to battle for it once again. They'd re-overtake Fred in early 2011, then Shane Dawson in late 2011, Nigga Higa in late 2012, leaving Ray William Johnson as the only creator with more subscribers than Smosh. However, of course, with double the manpower and a superior video style, Smosh would become the first channel in YouTube history to hit 10 million subscribers, and for the third time become YouTube's most subscribed channel on the 12th of January 2013, six and a half years after they had first achieved the title back in May of 2006. Throughout 2014, 2015, and 2016, 100 million views in a month had become business as usual. One of the main reasons for this was that Smosh had been acquired by a company Attention, known as Alloy Digital, which, as outlined by an article, Article written by Deadline resulted in a 40% increase in viewership. Alongside this would come new. What did they want? Thank you. I repeat. By an article written by Deadline resulted in a 40% increase in viewership. Alongside this would come numerous new Smosh channels, such as Smosh Games, which was experiencing its own similar blow up alongside the main channel. Smosh would release a full length feature film in 2015. By 2017, the team had grown once again, adding five new members to the main video cast, all of which completed under the management of Alloy Digital, which had since been renamed to. This is insane because they changed the cast, the format, the, uh, the content, everything changed, and it still remained successful at a certain degree that's that is insane not a lot of careers can do that that is something you rarely see while Defy uh, Media was adding substantial benefit that to is Smosh fantastic. as a channel, it was doing so at the cost of Anthony's creative freedom. He wanted to execute on his own ideas, but stated that everything needed to be put through a company filter. It was someone else's decision as to whether or not his ideas eventually made it onto Smosh's YouTube channel. For this reason, Anthony would announce that he would be leaving Smosh, which apparently had been in planning for some time, as See, the president like of Defy it. Media stated that isn't as clearly excited. See, that's why I said he would be leaving Smosh, which apparently had been in planning for some time. As the president, guys, would you rather have somebody who leaves because he's too creatively exhausted, right? Who, who isn't as invested in his own projects, or somebody to give you uh, a, a diluted version of themselves over and over again until things die down to milk it, dude? This is the best way to do it. The cycle of life. This reason, it is what it is, man. That he will be leaving Smosh, which apparently had been in planning for some time, as the president of Defy Media man, stated man, that I'm the company has been preparing snap, for Padilla's departure for several months and has worked to diversify its programming and cast for even longer. Anthony would announce the departure in a video on his personal channel titled Why I Left Smosh, explaining in his own words the reason for his resignation. I've been holding on to these memories and hoping that someday Smosh would be like how it was when we first started. Not before possible. Before Smosh was a brand, and owned by a company. Smosh being part of a company has put all of my creative decisions through a filter of what's appropriate for the Smosh brand as deemed by the company. This video was uploaded alongside a main channel video titled Anthony is leaving Smosh, in which they explained that his leaving was not a result of them having a fight or anything along those lines. I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna assume he's leaving because we got some sort of big fight or because we hate each other. No. Uh, but I can guarantee you guys it has nothing to do with that. Now you might think that losing Anthony was the beginning of the end for Smosh, the reason the channel began to crumble. However, the data actually showed the opposite. The channel was averaging around 60 million views a month at the time of Anthony's departure, yet would rise back up pretty consistently to an average of around 100 million per month a year later. This showed that the success of the channel was perhaps less reliant on the hosts themselves, but rather the content, the team, and specifically the management. However, this would also mean that the success of the channel was to some degree out of the control of Smosh's remaining front man, Ian, which would become an issue when the parent company, Defy Media, randomly shut down overnight. So our Wait, parent what? company uh, went out of business mm -hmm. and Smosh is currently without a home. With the company now defunct, former member Anthony went to town in a personal channel video Wait, discussing what? the ways in- But what did that company did for them? Um, With the company now defunct, former member Anthony went to town in a personal channel video discussing the ways in which Defy Media had screwed him over. I've had so much to say about Defy Media for a very long time, but now that Defy Media isn't a thing anymore, I just have to say everything that I'm feeling. I've been uh -oh. hiding it publicly for so long. He stated that when Defy Media bought Smosh back in 2011, they paid him in stock, which was completely useless unless the company went public, which it never did. So I sold it for but zero dollars. That is such a big fucking no-no I feel like though, dude, dude. Completely useless unless that the company is such went an public, old which meme. it never did. So I sold it for zero dollars. Selling for stock means that 
is completely valueless unless that company goes public, which yeah. it never did. Additionally, after selling Smosh to Defy Media, Anthony was simply a salaried employee, stating that he never saw any of the big money that Smosh had been pulling in. We were given salaries at this, at this company, which was great. Super happy with that. But that company was drawing in millions of dollars every year. And I was seeing a fraction of that. I have no idea where all that money went that the company was making. In the first episode of the Smosh Car Show, Shane and Ian mentioned that Defy Media was clearly in strife leading up to the shutdown. Every couple months, there'd be just massive layoffs. Yeah. And like 30 people would lose their job and we'd all be like, oh my God, yeah. this sucks. Mm -hmm. We'd Our budget kept getting cut and cut until we were like, we're shooting sketches with nothing. Two months after Defy Media had become defunct, the channel would have one of their best months ever with 139 million monthly views, received from content that had been lined up and filmed while everything at Defy was still going well. We got um, videos that we have already shot on Smosh. Mm -hmm. We have videos we've already shot on Smosh Pit. A lot of And we have videos that we've already shot on Smosh Game. However, this level of viewership would become the channel's high watermark, as after this stellar 139 million view month in January 2019, the channel's viewership began to decline quite consistently. There are some pretty obvious substantial public changes over the last two years, which hint at the reason behind why things have begun to go south after 13 years of seemingly unstoppable growth. In February 2019, slightly before the peak that followed the channel's decline, Smosh was bought by Rhett and Link from Good Mythical Morning. In the video announcing the acquisition by Mythical Entertainment, they'd mentioned that Smosh now had the ability to do whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted. That's we get to it? do whatever we want, and we're super, super excited. This was clarified in the Smosh cast. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, they bought him out? Is that what happened? I, don't, I didn't really, what if I, what? Imagine that Smosh now had the ability to do whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted. We get to do whatever we want, and we're super, super excited. This was clarified in the Smosh cast. They meant that they were pretty much an independent company, only with a little oversight from Rhett and Link. This is as close to being our own company yeah. as it could possibly get, but it's like safer, and like, like Rhett and Link's people are like, giving advice and trying to help us like, hey, this is some ideas and like be better, but like you don't have to do this yeah. if you don't want. The three members seemed to think that having their own creative freedom and control of the channel was gonna be a massive advantage. The reality now is that it, it's kind of just us doing our yeah. thing. Rhett and Link were like, here's this studio we have. Uh, yep do whatever you want. In Wait the process crapping on Defy Media, saying how bad they were, saying that they didn't know how to have fun and saying that they were bad at comedy. Defy <laughs> was the principal that would come in every now and then be like, stop having fun, you gotta do this, whatever. And yeah. we were like, okay. Um, and it was tough because they didn't have a sense of humor. No. They didn't understand it was comedy. A... Yet the data seems to indicate that while with Defy Media, the channel had consistently high views. And it was only when Smosh did have the ability to go out on their own that things began to decline. Just because Smosh didn't like the management and leadership when they were with Defy media didn't necessarily mean that Defy weren't knowledgeable on the topic of retaining an audience. In fact, if there was a lot of adversity, it probably meant that Defy Media and the Smosh team had extremely differing opinions on what should and shouldn't have been posted, where Defy Media might have actually been the correct one the whole time. The universe seems to work in a bizarre way where being caught Chat, in a terrible- this is complete- I'm not, yes, I wish I could comment on this. I can't only watch it and listen. Dude, dude, having a parent company on a channel owned by multiple people of kind of that, that's that dude I don't know anything about scenarios this, this is with crappy insufferable management might actually be the dose of short term uncomfortability that without you even realizing gives you the motivation to create something great perhaps it was Smosh's never ending wrestling match with Defy Media that was actually giving them a reason to continue nah, on with nah, the project nah, day nah, after nah, day nah, maybe Smosh were trying to come up with the nah, best nah, ideas nah. for no other reason than to spite Defy Media to prove them wrong as petty as it sounds which unbeknownst to them at the time might have actually been keeping the channel's viewership up we been together and we were always trying to make mm -hmm. great stuff we were always having fun and doing crazy sh and we all had this kind of common enemy the yeah. whole time we were kind of yeah. like uh these corporate overlords that are always it felt like an 80s movie boundless freedom with the ability to do whatever you want whenever you want isn't always necessarily a good thing freedom is comfortable because there's no adversity but when there's no adversity there's no growth ian mentioned in that same podcast that while with the fire media they had substantially more resources i gotta give them credit like we were able to do a lot of stuff and we were able to use a lot of resources yeah we had good resources yeah. yeah ian didn't define exactly what he meant by resources. Perhaps he meant a bigger budget to create sets, paying for props, and most importantly, paying for the large team which assisted in making the staff, getting stuff done, fucking uh, hiding stuff lined up 
talking to people uh, videos. This, this in a video they titled a lot, The Truth about a lot, Smosh sure. posted back in 2017 when everything was going well on the channel, Ian introduces the entire Smosh team consisting of 39 different people. A team that large was certainly going to cost a lot of money and based purely on speculation, perhaps after leaving Defy Media, they no longer had the budget to keep everyone on board. Alternatively, perhaps after the closure of Defy had been announced, some of Smosh's team may have been proactive in finding new employment before Smosh was acquired by Retin Link. A third theory could be that since experiencing a decline in viewership, such a large team may now be financially unfeasible. It's hard to tell exactly how Smosh makes their money, and they have loads of different channels each bringing in different amounts of revenue, but if we focus for two seconds on the main channel, I can't imagine it being the type of content that's bringing in massive dollars. Many of the videos over the last month have been shorts which don't bring in any money, and the skits which are around four to five minutes long each probably aren't raking it in either. Across the rest of their channels, they're gaining a combined total of around 20 to 30 million views a month, which in combination with their other methods for earning that is a lot may no of be people. To support Holy a team of shit! Staff. This is still just speculation, obviously. But the reason we focus so heavily on speculation is because there are barely any obvious indicators in the case of Smosh, as there often are with other creators. Their viewership is down by 85%, but the video quality isn't down by 85%. In fact, the videos are no worse comparative to two years ago when the channel was gaining 100 million views a month. But maybe this is the problem: a lack of change in innovation. Their every blank ever series is still a staple of their channel after over six years and comprises about a quarter of the channel's uploads, yet it gains substantially less views than it used to because people are probably just getting bored of the same old format. Another minor thing is that the videos have adopted a slight political bias over the years, with the occasional Ugh. judgmental self-righteous comment about what is and isn't appropriate to say, and using an example of, say, BuzzFeed, the most hated brand in existence who's been experiencing massive layoffs over the last couple of years, wedging a subtle political agenda into videos that people watch for comedy is a disaster waiting to happen. The most interesting thing in the overall decline of Smosh is that the channel's viewership is only slightly higher than former member Anthony Padilla's personal channel, which is likely run with the help of a substantially smaller team. Maybe there are just too many moving parts at Smosh, too many differing opinions, and too many creative minds to concede on the direction in which the project needs to innovate and change. Okay. Okay, boys. I was nice, boys. I actually enjoyed it a lot. I think that was. I think that was a lot of fun.